Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline. And as usual, I'm sitting in my car getting ready to head out to two Goodwills. This morning is Monday and I am about to head up north to East Earl. This is the Goodwill that is in Amish country. I think I showed this probably a couple of videos ago where every Monday they put their oldest color tag on sale for $1.05. So this morning I'm on it. I'm going to head up that way and hopefully be the first one in the door and then eat lunch in my car and head over to Route 30's Goodwill where I will source hard goods and maybe some clothing. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go thrifting together. <music> So we are in the door like a shot. This is the second Goodwill and I immediately find this very cool cat tray, piece of pottery signed. I also gravitate towards dishes that are two hands held out. I know this stands for something, I always forget what. And a little candy dish, this might be flash painted. Hopefully the tape won't pull the paint off but I felt like putting those in my cart today. Doesn't mean that every day I will buy candy dishes like that, but today I was feeling it. All right, a new cart of inventory comes out. This is Bone China, England. Doesn't always mean that you should pick it up. You really have to comp different teacups. Now I'm sure a lot of you are more knowledgeable in teacups than I am, so I leave them behind. Okay, so now I start to get serious. We are going up and down the Christmas aisle. I do give this a tap test. I knew the base was plastic. Now I imagine that the reindeer is plastic also, but I thought he was especially good. This is a taper candle holder. And for some reason, I really liked this very ornate looking reindeer and put him in my cart. Tried to put him in my cart. <laughs> Some days I walk in and I immediately find things and other days it's a real hunt. So today I'm using my iPhone because I didn't know I was going to film today. I thought I was just shopping. Here we're looking on the bottom of this, made in China, $12.99. Now sometimes, like I say, I do buy things made in China if they're especially good. I'm sure a lot of Pottery Barn and other current brands are made in China, so it doesn't mean I never pick them up. I do have to judge each piece by its quality and what store I think it came from. Here's a little handmade wooden elf. In our community, we have a lot of wood products that come into Goodwill that are handmade and I love finding them. This is home. I'm not sure who makes just home. There I'm checking for a chip. That might have been a mistake to leave that cherry printed butter dish behind. Leave a comment if you know where home brand is sold. I'm thinking it's probably Walmart or Kmart. I thought he was kind of cool in the beginning, but I didn't like the way that he was painted, that little gingerbread man. Now in the first Goodwill, I picked up Strictly Clothing at the dollar five. Here I'm definitely about the hard goods. I do really like selling nativities. They can be quite a bit to pack. This one was beautiful, but not finely painted enough and the baby Jesus was missing. So many of you have been encouraging me really to go down the clear glass aisle and guys, I am trying. <laughs> Here I find this bottle. I imagine some kind of liquor was stored in it or sold in it, I should say. And I'm sure this aqua green slag glass has a proper name, which I don't know. And for a little while, I did put it in my cart to look it up, but I didn't think that it brought any kind of profit. I could be wrong about that. I take a second look at it and it was a liqueur bottle. But like I said, I wind up putting that one back. Okay, so here is a Pillsbury dough. I guess it's a plastic cookie jar. That's not my hand. It was a woman standing next to me. Uh, we kind of both reached for it at the same time and I told her, go ahead and take it. And they wanted $9.99 for it. So we both wound up putting it back. And I didn't think that that would bring much money anyway. It was vintage, but it was plastic and 
I think they're quite common. So to be totally truthful, I have no idea what I'm looking for on the clear glass aisle. I mean, if I found like marked glass, you know, by a high-end company, I feel like I would recognize it. But other than that, I'm just taking chances. Okay, so I think this crystal sugar dish, because it's got the indentation for the spoon, seemed interesting and I figured, okay, I'll take a chance on this. I'm not even sure how I'm gonna comp that, but in the cart it goes, I will give that a try. When I don't know anything about a niche, I do try to pick up a few pieces just to train my eye. This reminded me of one of the little Toby mugs, is that what they're called? But I in glass and I left him behind. Beautiful cut glass. I think that might have been an ice bucket. Not even sure about that. Okay, clearly this doesn't belong on the clear aisle. And I do give this a really quick thought. Looked very 1980s. I didn't think it was very well done. But note to self, I really have to learn to read either Chinese or Japanese. Just kidding because I never know what these things say. I think that one did say 1990s. And Darlene has lost her mug. And as you can see, we have turned the aisle onto the white shelf. Look how beautiful these dishes are. Now back in the day, I would wanna buy all of this. And here I'm turning it over. It is American Beauty by Stetson. Goodwill used to sell these type of things by the complete set. I used to be able to pick up a set like this for five or six dollars. Not that I would pick it up because like I said, I'm kind of over dishes. Dishes are a lot of work. Washing all of those dishes, photographing all of those dishes, packing all of those dishes. I really don't want to do dishes anymore and I'm giving myself a break. I might come back to that. Here I'm just looking at a few random individual pieces. This little miniature sugar and creamer, the sugar had lost its top, had a violets pattern, and I would imagine that's for espresso, maybe, because that was super tiny. Unless it's an individual. Hmm, that's an interesting concept. Okay, $9.95 for a Welsh Corgi biscuit jar. So here is another shot of this Pillsbury Doughboy. As you can see, $9.99. For some reason, I went back and got him and put him in my cart until I fully checked comps because I thought I might have made a mistake, but he went back on the shelf. Now, I didn't say I've stopped looking at dishes. I've just stopped buying pretty much all of them, but I, I need to look at them. I just need to see what they are. And those were Pier 1, very heavy. And right now I am really rethinking my shipping uh, services that I use. I use USPS pretty much exclusively. I'm gonna have to really rethink that because with the prices, my heavier hard goods have really taken a hit. So I would like to use UPS or FedEx and I'm trying to figure out how to make that complete switch without having to change every individual listing. So I might look into business policies and see if there's some way I can create, you know, adding UPS to my shipping capability. That way the buyer will be able to have it shipped at a less expensive cost and uh, maybe it won't become so much work for me to travel back and forth. Sorry for the shaky camera work. Here I'm just scanning. This is an art kit. There are quite a few of these in Michael's and other craft stores. I feel like if I found a really high quality one, I'd be able to tell by how the media is printed, like what kind of labeling it has. I could be wrong about that. This was the plastic uh, beauty dust jar by Avon. Was that called beauty dust? Very interesting. 
I have lots of beauty dust in my house. I think I'm at the point where I need to hire a house cleaner because it's not happening as often these days. Okay, this iridescent amethyst glass, again, I'll call it a candy dish. I did like this. I was trying to look at this more carefully to see if the glass was colored or if this was flash painted, and I'm thinking it's flash. So when I try to figure that out, I will hold it up to the light. I look for any wear, because if something is flash painted, that means the glass is clear and the color has been applied, it'll wear off. Now the base of it did look a little bit more faint to me, but I couldn't figure it out, so I kept it in my cart. And spoiler alert, I wound up buying that piece. I thought I would just show that to you guys. I had no, no plans of picking it up. But it's so funny how people might decorate their house with things like that. Kind of reminded me of Norman Rockwell, but I don't think it was. So now we are on the red pink aisle and I see this little box that I had to remove the tape and fight to get it off. These are salt cellars individual little salt dishes but what i liked about it they all had this little shovel spoon i don't know that i've ever seen that so while salt sellers of this type in my opinion will not bring a high dollar i do put this in my cart there you can see i believe it was made in Czechoslovakia, uh, because i really liked those little spoons so i'm gonna have to comp that and see if that's more common than i realize I have a thing for chickens. I still have a thing for chickens. I wanted this chicken. It had a Made in China sticker on it, and for some reason that felt wrong to me. I kept picking this up. I felt like this was Italy, Spain. Really, like, look at the bottom of that. But it said Made in China. I was stumped and back it went. That could have been the biggest mistake of the day because those little gold stickers can transfer from thing to thing or somebody could have just put it on there. But I did look for, you know, for the markings and I might've missed it. Just some colored stemware. Okay, individual pieces, still the bane of my existence. So hard to pass them up. This, I believe, is Limoges. Limoges has different markings. See that H and C? I forget what it stands for. Havilland and Company, maybe. Just made that up. Um, but I really liked that olive dish, garnish dish, trinket dish. Yep, I will use all of those things in the keywords when I list it because I bought it. Now we are on to the blue and purple aisle. And like magic, we are on to the green aisle because I did not find anything on the blue aisle. On the green aisle, I have a tendency to look for beautiful glass items. That's pretty much what I find on the green aisle, sometimes pottery. I did look at that vase very quickly and scanning, not really taking a lot of time on that aisle. And of course, when I didn't have the camera on, a whole cart of Christmas came out and my cart filled up very quickly. This was the cart, so as you can see, lots of Christmas. And I do wind up going through most of that. I look for vintage or just different pieces that I think will be interesting to the buyer. Here is a music box rocking horse. Now I don't pick up a lot of this, but this was in new condition. This is, I believe, San Francisco company. I think I do show it. And I felt like this was a good price point and that it would do well. So when I find a piece like this, I'm sure to wind it up and let it play to make sure that it's in good working condition because most buyers would want a music box to play the music and a lot of them can be overwhelmed, which I'm sure you guys realize. I also love that these items come in styrofoam box, very easy to ship. It's got its packing there. Okay, so finally I turn it over, music box company, and this will probably bring around $30 is my guess. And I think I paid four for it. Okay, so clearly somebody donated their doll collection. <laughs> Lots of dolls, dolls for days. 
and you can see that these dolls are all inexpensive dolls. The last one might have had a little bit of merit, but because she has an open mouth, but again, not much. Very stereoid, mass produced. These dolls are made by the tens of thousands. And a lot of times it's almost like either a subscription or a numbered item. And now we are on to shoes. This is, I think, the only pair I found. This is um, Solomon, I believe we say it, 747. This is a running sneaker for people doing outdoor trails, running outdoor trails. So I take those. So here I'm just showing you a few highlights of what I pick up. This one is always a yes, Vermont Country Store, when it's in this denim jumper style. Guys, I have sold, I feel like, hundreds if not thousands of denim jumpers in bigger sizes. They don't move for me when they're a smaller size. But women seem to love these if they're in great condition. Here we have a 1X, and the Vermont Country Store is nice quality, always a yes. And lastly, I'm gonna leave you with two still shots or screenshots. These are dolls that I did pick up because I'm trying to learn toys a little bit more. So I saw these Cabbage Patch dolls. They do have this marking on the back of the head. And I didn't think that this was a really high dollar return, but I did wanna take a chance on them. I paid $3 a doll. So here is the, I believe this is the preemie and it says 1978-1982 original Appalachian artworks. And this is manufactured by Coleco. So even though I didn't feel it was a really high return, I did take two of them to learn more about them. When I put something in my cart like this and I buy it, it causes me to do more research rather than just looking at it, running a quick comp and putting it back. So when I'm trying to learn something and something has a low enough buy-in price, I will kind of make myself do a little more homework on it. This is a shot so this is the cart of what it looked like at this second store, and I bought quite a bit of clothing at the first store. Thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours. So in this part of the video, I'm just going to share a little haul of some of the more interesting pieces I picked up and why I picked them up. This first hands dish is a milk glass. This is Westmoreland. Now, these won't bring a lot of money, but these sell through fairly quickly for me. People seem to really love the double hands pattern. And this is what the back looks like. This is Westmoreland's, if you can see that there, Mark. And like I said, I've sold quite a few of these. I always pick them up as long as they're in good condition. These two pieces of glass I wound up picking up and when I washed them, the dirt came off and showed the damage. So I wanted to share that with you guys so you can be on the lookout for it. This is a flash painted candy dish. I'm gonna hold it up to the light so maybe you can see the scratches. So that greatly depletes the value of it. Now I will still list it. None of this stuff is listed yet. And the red one is the same thing. It had a lot of dust. So a lot of times when items were flash painted, it was to save money. This one is actually Avon, which I did not recognize or notice in the store. These are two of the Cabbage Patch dolls that I picked up. As you can see, the clothing is branded and I did give them a little, a little hand washing. The way that you learn about Cabbage Patch dolls is the back of the head is marked and will tell you the dates of when the patent pending, I believe, was for this doll. It'll also give you where it was made. This is Coleco and it was manufactured by them. Sometimes they're marked Spain. But then inside, if you look at the back hip, there will be a label and a signature. And we're going to take a look at that. So here's the tag. Again, it gives you pretty much the same information as the back of the neck. And then if you take a look a little bit further down, there is a signature. Let's see if I can get the diaper down a little bit for us. So there is the signature, Xavier Roberts. And inside the curlicue of his signature, it tells you when the exact date is. This is 1984. 
And if you notice the signature is in black, a lot of times these signatures are in different colors. I will try to insert a chart here that shows you how the color of the signature ties into the date the doll was made. So again, you go by condition. There are quite a few dolls that bring a much higher return. The African-American dolls, the preemies are good. Certain dolls that are more rare than the other dolls. When you have the box packaging and the birth certificate, all of the paperwork, again, it brings a lot more money. Um, I don't have those things, but I did find these two, $3 each I paid. And this baby is 1984, did I say 84? And I believe she's 83. Uh, yeah, 84 and 83. So I'm not quite sure what they'll bring. I'm probably gonna guess between 30 and maybe 45. All right, next up I found this cat dish. You guys know I love picking up things like this, very folk art, and this is put out by North Eagle. Now again, this dish won't bring a lot of money, but this will be a quick seller, probably $15 to $18, and I paid $3. This is a styling tool, a hair styling tool, that the minute I saw this, I comped this, because whenever I see things like this, I'm always on the hunt to see if I can find more of them. A lot of times they get donated for some reason. Maybe it's some kind of beauty store that went out of business today. I only found one. It's called The Perfector, Maria McCall. And it's a fusion, ionic, ceramic styling tool, brand new. So I was thrilled to find this. It does have the book uh, with instructions and everything is brand new. And to be truthful, I don't remember what I paid for this. I took all the stickers off. I'm going to have to go back and look. I think I paid $4.99. And this should bring probably about $35. And the buyer pays shipping. And last up, I wanted to show you this Music Box Rocking Horse. This is the San Francisco Company, uh, San Francisco Music Box Company, I believe it's called. So this is a rocking horse at Christmas time. And we'll take a look at the bottom of it. So there it is, Music Box Company, San Francisco. It is a wind-up. And this is in brand new condition because it came in the styrofoam and the box. It even had bits of wrapping paper. Somebody must have unwrapped it and never used it. And this last find is probably my all-time favorite find of the year, I'm going to say. Not that it's a high dollar amount, but I just love this thing. This is Charming Tales. It's the three wise men. Whoop, come here, little wise man. Get in the shot. And, or the three kings, I guess you could say. And the creche and Joseph and Mary and baby Jesus. Look how adorable these are. Are these so sweet? Baby Jesus in the manger with a leaf blanket, and there's Mary and Joseph, and then the kings bearing gifts. I just love this thing. And in the very top of the creche is a little mouse angel. So these are actually highly collected and this set is really, I think it's two parts. It's the manger with Mary, Jesus, and Joseph, and then the three kings is a separate add-on, and I have all of them. I found them together, and I'm guessing probably around the $55 to $60 mark. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours. <music>